Hey, what's up guys? Garden here, coming to you guys with a brand new deck profile, and today we're going to be looking at an old one, but a good one. It's going to be Garmor. So, uh, yeah, I haven't done a profile on this ever since, like, last year, I think. Um, I believe it was March, the last deck profile. It was a really long time ago. But I wanted to do an updated list. Um, there's obviously been some new support since the last one I did, <laughs> so... I felt, I felt like Garmor deserved an updated profile, but I also wanted to do a bit of an experimental deck with this one. Um, I know that there's quite some straightforward builds that you can go with. Uh, but we actually got an up, a, a new card from the Aggravain set, um, that I kind of wanted to mess around with. So I felt like Garmor was a good opportunity to see exactly how flexible it was. And to be honest, this deck, it performs kind of the same as the old one, but it just has a little bit of extra spice involved. So. Yeah, that's kind of what you can expect. So we'll get into the deck and I'll show you guys what I am playing in this updated Garmor list. So to start with, of course, we have the four copies of Garmor. So the first skill of Garmor hasn't really popped up. Um, I mean, it's quite a weird one. It's if you have a, if your hand is one or less, um, all of your regards cannot be attacked and cannot be retired by your opponent's card abilities. Doesn't really come up if I'm being fair. Um, but we don't really care about that one. The main thing that we care about is when we ride him on Vanguard, we can counter blast one, look at the top three cards of our deck, uh, call one of those to the regard circle, and then put the rest of the bottom, and then we can choose up to six of our units on the field and give them 3,000 power. So he's kind of acting like a really miniature soul saver in a way, but the main thing about that is that it allows your Axel numbers to be that little bit bigger to reach force numbers, and also sometimes get around those defensive triggers. So that's the really cool thing with Garmor is that it's a little bit safer when it comes to your attacks because you know that if your opponent gets a damage trigger, you still have a decently sized rear guard that can still hit them. So that's really cool. So yeah, Garmor is going to be the face of the deck. So we're going to be playing four copies of him. And then the backup rear guard that we have with him, or the backup vanguard, I should say, but he's also a pretty good rear guard, is for Sagramor. So Sagramor, of course, he's very simple. He's pretty much been good ever since the first set that came out with uh, with, El with Ezel in it. So, Sagamore, when he's placed on Vanaria, you can Soul Blast 1, draw a card, and then call a card from your hand. Pretty simple, but pretty effective. It's a solid plus 1 for a Soul Blast. Uh, he's a solid ride target. He has the Gift Marker on him. So, yeah, he's just really, really solid. So, you either want to be riding your Sagamores or your Gamores. Um, either or are fine, because you're going to be generating pluses and filling the field, which is what you want to do in this deck. So, four copies of him. Now, the next grade three, ho oh, oh, ho, this is where the spice comes in. So the main reason why I decided to put this next card in was because of the new card that we got from the Aggravant set, which we'll get to in a second. So I'm actually playing one copy of Pelinor. Yeah, we are playing this. So, um, like I said, um, it's merely because of the new support card, which we'll get to quickly, don't worry. Um, but for those that don't know Pelinor, it's when your regards attack hits your opponent's vanguard, you can counter blast one, soul blast three, and then ride him from your hand on your vanguard as stand. Then your vanguard gets drive minus one. So the main things here is that you're going to be generating another marker because you're riding the vanguard. So the cool thing is that you can actually go for Excel two, which is what you want to do in this deck. Since in my opinion, I feel like even though you are going to be generating a lot of uh, resources with all the plusing effects, you kind of need to maintain decent hand size in here because we do lack in the power side of things. But it's really spicy how you can superior ride the Pelinor, get the XL2, and then draw an extra card. So you're actually replacing the card that Pelinor was in your hand with a fresh card from the XL marker. So that's really cool. So it kind of diminishes the backlash that Pelinor has in a way. Now, you're probably thinking that, okay, that's cool, but a Counter Blast and Soul Blast 3, that's, uh, that's pretty steep, right? Well, we'll get to that. So, we're playing one copy of him. Um, admittedly, one is a little bit RNG, but to be fair, the, the idea with this was that if you get it, you get it, and if not, then you have plenty of other units in your deck that require Soul Blasts that you can dedicate those resources for. So, speaking of, we have the next units, which are going to be our Grade 2s. We have four copies of Vivian. Uh, Vivian is still pretty solid. Um, it is pretty expensive in terms of a cost being a Counter Blast and a Soul Blast, but it is what the deck wants to do. It wants to just fill the field up as much as it can. So 
And another thing is, it's kind of like Garmo in a way, how it looks at top three, calls one, puts the rest to the bottom. Uh, she does get 3,000 power, so she can help make some good numbers there. But there's actually something pretty funny about that interaction of, you know, look at top three, put the rest to the bottom. Now, you can, in theory, if you do end up seeing a lot of triggers, stack a lot of them to the bottom of the deck, because you don't really want to be calling them now, do you? Now, that's a bit of an awkward situation, because... Uh, <laughs> In my opinion, I think with Garmor is that if you start seeing a lot of triggers go to the bottom of your deck, you're not particularly going to survive that long, in my opinion. So the cool thing is Kaiden <laughs> actually has the effect to shuffle our deck. Um, yeah, a little bit weird how that kind of effect is a bit relevant here, but in, I honestly feel like you should be shuffling the deck. If, if you see loads of triggers go to the bottom, that needs to get shuffled up because you do not want to be losing out on your heels, your fronts, or anything like that. Um, now that can work in terms of a stacking strategy, because I know that um, before you could, in theory, you know, keep an, a reminder of what triggers went to the bottom and then they could come up uh, later on. The problem is that the game has power crept quite heavily. So, <laughs> yeah, you won't probably live long enough if you're playing a Garmor deck and you're expecting to see the bottom cards of your deck for trigger checks. That's probably not going to happen. So it's quite nice how Kaiden, although we're playing him because he's Kaiden and he works with Howell, of course, he gives you pluses, he fills the field, he does what we want him to do, wanted him to do, but he's also providing the shuffling effect to shuffle our deck up, so that's a little bit funny in my opinion, <laughs> so yeah. Um, but either way, we were going to be playing four of him anyway, because he's a good way to help fill the field up, and of course generate pluses. Now, the next grade two is what made me want to experiment with this deck with the Pelinor and all the Soul Blasting units, which was four copies of Eleanor, which is from the new Aggravain set. So this unit has two skills. It says, well, it has one skill, but two different effects. So the it says that it gets both of the skills depending on the number of calls you've done during that turn. So if you've done two or more, it'll get 5,000 power. Not too bad. It becomes a 14k attacker. The second skill is um, if you've called four or more, you can then give it an extra 10,000 power. But at the end of the battle that it attacks, you can then move it into your soul. So not only can this unit get really big, um, helping you bypass those defensives and having some really meaty recard attacks as well. The cool thing with this is that it helps us generate soul as well. So before, the only way we could really generate soul in this deck was to either rewrite our vanguard like a numerous amount of times, or utilizing cards such as Bernius to help fill the soul back up when we ride the Vanguard, but it doesn't do a whole lot when we're rewriting Sagramors because we're soul blasting from the Sagramor skill. So that's a little bit awkward. But with the Eleanor, we actually have the opportunity to generate more soul to then allow our soul blasting cards to use their skills a bit more often. So we can now get an extra Sagamore, we can get an extra Vivian or an extra Dindrian skill off at some point in the game, which is pretty cool because before we don't even really get the chance to use like maybe two Vivians or, you know, two Vivians, two Sagramors, two Dindrians or whatever. You wouldn't necessarily get the chance to use all of them. But with the additional soul charging that you can get from Eleanor, that's actually pretty cool. So, yeah, that is uh, that is essentially what I was uh, trying to base this deck around with the Pelinor and the Eleanor. Also pretty funny how their names are similar. So <laughs> was this planned? I don't know. But um, yeah, that's the direction I wanted to take it. I felt like it would be a bit more fun that way. And you know what? It actually was. Um, we had some spicy players um, and we <laughs> we were actually able to re-ride the Pelinor quite often. Um, I think I did it like two or three times, uh, surprisingly. So yeah. Now, next, we have the grade ones. We're playing the four copies of Hoel, of course, um, to go with our Kaidens. We are going to be playing the four copies of Bernius to um, help us get the extra soul that we need for the uh, soul chargings. Uh, just put him here will do. That's not too bad. Um, and yeah, we have the four copies of Dindran. So the grid ones are pretty simple, um, generally speaking. But when it comes to the deck, um, the cool thing about this is that there's actually a pretty cool combo that you can do with the Eleanor and the Bernius, where if you have the field set up correctly, you can, when you do the Pelinor rewrite, you can then use your Bernius skill put him into the soul, draw a card, call a card, and then you could call that unit where the Eleanor was, which, if it's in a Howell column, will get the extra power from Howell. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty strange, but it's very reliant on pieces, but it's really cool when it goes off. So, uh, yeah, that's the um, that's the spice. 
Now, is this deck great? Uh, I wouldn't say it's competitive, but it's definitely fun. I'll give it that. It's definitely fun to play with. Um, so yeah, we just have the triggers to go through, really. Well, the grade zeros, because uh, that is essentially the deck core. Um, so for the grade zeros, we have the Spring Breeze Messenger, which we can play since we don't obviously play Ezelin here. And we actually have a second starter that we can mess around with. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Um, and then for the triggers, we have the Forefront with Dentigal, since of course it's Garmor and it's a wolf. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have two more fronts with the Drummer. Um, so I decided to go for the six front because I did want to play the two criticals in here for a little bit of pressure on the Vanguard swing. Um, if your opponent starts twigging on the fact that you're playing eight fronts, then your opponent is not going to care about your Vanguard anymore. So I kind of want a couple of crits in there to make them worry a little bit, which uh, can come up sometimes. And then last but not least, we have the four draw PGs with Mark and the four Alexis Amelia for the heal triggers. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially the deck. So... Overall, uh, the deck does want to be going with Excel 2, in my opinion, just in terms of generating resources. Um, the deck's very slow-paced, like it's not as fast as some of the newer decks these days, so the Excel 2 will definitely help you out there. But if you're looking just for a fun deck, like not too competitive, not too like aggressive as well, it's definitely a nice deck to play around with. And like I said, the Pelinor is actually pretty cool. Um, if it happens, it happens. If not, then... Your opponent can just worry about it all game because <laughs> as soon as they see it once, they're going to be like, okay, uh, where's Pelinor? I haven't seen it yet. It's not in your damage zone. I haven't seen it for your drive checks. He might have it. And when it comes to the late stages of the game, it can get pretty tight. So uh, yeah, but overall, this deck's very fun to play. Uh, I quite like it. Um, I think after this, I'm going to be going back to Ezel, I feel. Um, although Aggravain is a pretty nice deck to play. I think it's just not my play style overall, um, Aggravain, just in terms of the the aggressiveness of it. I don't know. But Ezel, I just like the superior riding aspect of Ezel. I think this is really fun and, uh, you know, playing cool cards like Gareth and Bowmans and stuff like that. So I don't know. I might do an updated list for Ezel later on. Uh, I got some ideas for how that deck could be built. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But for now, uh, this is my Garmor deck. Uh, I hope you guys like the update to it. And uh, if you've got any suggestions down below, feel free to mention them. Um, like the video, guys, if you liked it. And yeah, that's going to be me. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Guardian, signing out.